What up, nerds? Check it out. I am excited. Why am I excited, you might ask? Because tonight, for the first time in a year, I'm going to get to hook a telescope up to a camera. Oh, I'm so excited. Why? Why a year, you might ask? Wilson, isn't astrophotography kind of your thing? Don't you like doing it? Yes, but I have been so busy. We started a massive renovation project on the house. We put in uh, new countertops. We painted the entire house. We ripped up all the carpet and put in new hardwood floors. I built a, a new uh, entertainment center slash electric fireplace thing. Um, I refaced the wood burning fireplace that we have. Put in a new backsplash and put in a new sink. We have been doing a ton of work on the house. And for the most part, I have done pretty much all of it myself. Um, we did hire someone to do the painting because Wilson don't paint. And while I did the entire downstairs floor myself, I did hire someone to do the upstairs floor uh, because <laughs> I'm apparently getting old and my knees hurt now. So if your knees don't hurt, just install a hardwood floor and I guarantee you they will and they will not stop hurting when you're done. Since we did most of the work ourselves, I was really limited to just working on the weekends. That's the only time I really had available to work. And that's usually the time that I do my astrophotography stuff because I'm a high school teacher and that means I work with teenagers. And I don't know if you've ever met a teenager, but they can test your patience. So Wilson needs to sleep. I can't be grumpy from exhaustion. So I can't be staying up all night with my telescope. So I can only do it on the weekends. And all my weekends were filled with renovation stuff. So it's finally done. <laughs> that means I get to use a telescope again. So check it out. I got new equipment a year ago. I got new equipment a year ago and it is still in the box because I haven't had time to use it until tonight. New monochrome camera. Oh yeah, monochrome. You might say, doesn't that mean black and white? Oh yeah. Wilson, aren't, aren't all the pretty pictures in color? Yeah, I'm gonna use this black and white camera to get me some color pictures. What? So here's the deal. Is from when I first got into astrophotography, it was quite evident that all of the best pictures were taken with monochrome cameras but that's an expensive road to go down and i wasn't sure if i was going to like astrophotography so i got myself a color camera which works great i've been able to get fantastic images but i have been super curious is it really the monochrome camera and filters that is taking every all the really great astrophotographers to the next level i don't know but i'm gonna find out um, here's the reason that this is an expensive road to go down. The camera itself is a little bit more expensive, but not by a whole lot. I think it's like two or 300 bucks more than a, a color camera. Um, what really gets you is the filters. In order to get a color image out of a black and white camera, you need to take a set of pictures with a hydrogen filter, another set of pictures with an oxygen filter, and another set of pictures with a sulfur filter. Well, you, you're gonna take those three different kinds of pictures you get, and you're gonna tell the computer, hey, use the hydrogen, make that, I don't know, red, and make the, uh, the sulfur one green, and make the oxygen one blue. Uh, and you can choose whatever channels you, you want those to be on, and that will allow the computer to make a full color image, even though your data was in black and white. So that's pretty cool. So I got myself, three new filters. You might say to yourself, Wilson, it looks like those cases are empty. That's because I've already loaded them in to get this blam, brand new, well, year old, but still in the box, um, electronic filter wheel. So what will happen is that uh, I can load multiple filters into this and a little motor will automatically rotate each filter in front of the camera. So how I've been using filters up to this point is I've been uh, using just a manual filter drawer. You can just slide the drawer out, change the filter, and slide it back in. And that's fine. It works great. But with this bad boy, I don't have to stay up all night. Oh, yeah. 
Wilson can still get his beauty sleep. And let me tell you, Wilson needs some beauty sleep. So I'll be able to just set everything up and say, hey, take however many pictures with this one, with this filter, take uh, and then automatically change it, automatically focus yourself, take a bunch of pictures with the next filter, and it can just do that over and over again and, and take as many shots as, as I want. So get this, not only, not only do I get to take pictures tonight, I get to take pictures tomorrow night too. Now here's the deal, I have never, done this before. This is this this is not going to be a tutorial video on how to do this because I don't know how to do this. I do. I've done some research. But having never actually done it, I have no idea if it's actually going to work. Got all kinds of new equipment, all kinds of new stuff to show you tonight. We're going to experiment. We're going to see if we can get some pictures and if nothing else, we're going to learn a few things and you're coming along for the ride. Let's take some photos. I am having trouble getting my guide camera in focus. Um, I'm having trouble even finding a star to, to even see. So I've decided to slew to the Pleiades, even though that's not my target for tonight. Um, the idea is that there's a lot of stars in that area and uh, a lot of them are quite bright, so it should increase my chances of being able to see something. So let's go to the Pleiades. So here's what's going on. I've got this weird like kind of half horseshoe shaped thing going on with my stars. Now, normally when stars are out of focus, you get like this donut. I'm getting like a half a donut. I think that what's happening here is that um, since the off-axis guider is skimming just a little bit of light off of the very edge of the telescope that not all of that light is coming in, like half of it is getting cut off and that's why I'm getting like a half circle look. It has taken me quite a while to figure out what is going on, but um, what is actually happening is that the back focus of my main camera is correct, but the back focus for the guide camera on the top is not correct. From the reducer to the camera's sensor needs to be 105 millimeters. That's called the back focus. I did a separate video on how to calculate back focus if, if you're interested you can check it out but suffice it to say there's two cameras here and the back focus for both of them need to be right and so the light comes in through here bounces off of a prism and goes up and then the rest of the light comes in into the the main uh, camera sensor here so the problem that I was having was the off-axis guider was actually too far back so while I could get the main camera in focus I wasn't able to get this one in focus so the solution was to move it forward as as forward as I can possibly get it so I'm gonna have to figure out what exactly the math is on this and do a separate video on off-axis guiders about two hours of tinkering and and nonsense has transpired but I have successfully got this thing to work so let's go ahead and get back after it the neighbor's dog is barking the neighbor has also turned on a 9,000 gigajoule light it is slightly brighter than the Sun the same neighbor has started smoking the pot as well not a fan of any of these things. So I have decided to come indoors to look at the stars. Because with the ASI Air Pro, you can do exactly that. It's wireless. <sighs> that did not work. So this is my first time. I Mistakes were made. So here's, here's what I learned. Um, first of all, the filter wheel is quite heavy and offset, and so that gives a, uh, a moment of action which allows for it to twist if the orientation of the telescope changes. So that messed up my uh, image train, and now none of my calibration frames lined up properly. So all of my calibration frames were messed up. But that's okay, because I didn't get any light frames either. <laughs> 
So the hydrogen captured very nicely, but the oxygen and sulfur, uh, evidently those channels capture much less light and they need much longer exposures. So all of both of those channels just came out black for me. I need to go longer next time. Lesson learned. But all was not lost. All was not lost because the next weekend I went out uh, to try to dial in some issues I was having with my off-axis guider. And while I was out there, um, I was shooting a different target and I was able to capture about an hour and a half worth of data on all three channels. So I do have an image to show you, um, not my original target. You know what, that's just how this goes. Uh, this is a very technical hobby and there's a steep learning curve whenever you add new stuff. That's what these videos are all about, is to kind of teach you the the lessons that I have learned so that you don't make the same mistakes. So hopefully I can get you up and running a little bit faster uh, than, than I did. So there you go. This is the Pac-Man Nebula. It's a little noisy because uh, I only had an hour and a half worth of data, but um, hopefully my next pictures will be uh, even better. But this is still pretty good. I'm, I'm pleased with how this came out for a, a first attempt, second attempt. First one was all black. But for a second attempt, not too shabby. Hour and a half worth of data. Here's Pac-Man Nebula, clear skies. <laughs>